Uh, if you're a fan of television like I am, don't really have much of a choice since I work in it so much, uh, you know that we are in a golden age of television. Uh, I'm not talking about the news. I'm talking about dramatic programming, things like Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad and, and The Sopranos and Mad Men and uh, Boardwalk Empire that I just recently started watching. Lots of amazing shows out there that are being done, showing that there's still a lot of life left in television when it is written properly and when it's got the right actors when they can get that formula uh, you really see they can make magic uh, it's got kind of Hollywood running scared a little bit as Hollywood tries to catch up and a lot of great movies as well in 2013 uh, we should point out uh, one of the big shows though that continues to surprise and continues to stun people because in fact its audience is growing season after season is something very different from Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones or uh, some of these sort of uh, more uh, violent shows or, you know, Breaking Bad, for example, The Crystal Meth, etc. Uh, Downton Abbey, uh, very different from all those other shows. This is a period piece, a British period piece uh, that is set in the first part of the 20th century, begins with the sinking of the Titanic and runs through World War One, and then now into the 1920s. Well, guess what? Its fourth season debuted this week in the United States on PBS in North America uh, to more than 10 million viewers. Here's what makes this interesting, though. The show actually, the fourth season actually debuted back in September in the UK where it's made and all these millions of people waited four months plus in order to actually see uh, the first episode, the premiere episode, 10 million viewers. By the way, that's a lot of viewers uh, by today's standards, uh, 10 million. You know, the American networks would be very, very happy to get those sort of numbers on any of their shows. Uh, and what's remarkable as well is that people didn't go and try to perhaps pirate the shows or stream them online, try to find them on the Internet. They actually waited for it to be uh, shown on PBS. Uh, joining me now is perhaps Montreal's biggest Downton Abbey fan. Uh, her name is uh, Beverly a Ackerman. She's a writer and a research scientist and the author of The Meaning of Children, but we got her on because she loves Downton Abbey. Beverly, thanks so much for coming on my show today. It's a great pleasure. Thanks for having me, Todd. Well, listen, I love this show too, <laughs> um, and uh, I stumbled upon it by accident, and I thought, what's this all about? I don't think I'm going to like this very much. But there's something very addictive about it, isn't there? Yes, it's just it's a fantastic uh, fun, you know, historical drama, fantastic production values. The themes that they cover are, you know, quite resonant. Um, you know, the lives of the one percent versus the rest of us. Women's rights, love, death, murder, melodrama. What's not to love, really? <laughs> it, it, what also is fascinating is how they really dig into exactly what you said. This idea of the lives of the one percent, albeit a hundred years ago, but this idea of uh, the upper crust versus the the serving class, all within one household. Right. It's you know, it's based on the same book uh, by Margaret Powell, which was one of those working class memoirs um, called Below Stairs. And this was the basis of that series, um, Upstairs, Downstairs, right. from, I think the 80s. So Julian Fellows really went to, you know, very resonant source material and, and, and started over. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's all about class, which is something we in North America pretend doesn't really exist. And yet we're fascinated with all these British uh, series where class is so important. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of depth to it, although there's a lot of melodrama, too. Well, of course. Right. That's what makes it. It's sort of there's a lot of good old soap opera elements to it, uh, which which connect with a lot of people. There's also this 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 sort of trajectory uh, where because it starts in 1912 and then goes through to the 1920s, you actually kind of see this this family that is at the heart of the show having to evolve in real time. This sort of aristocratic family have to deal with the shifting, uh, I guess, mores and, and morals of society as they go from being this ultra elite, they have to start to make allowances for what's happening in society and, and how class differences are slowly, very slowly, sort of being brushed away. Absolutely. I used to think that, um, you know, Lord Crawley was, was the main character. But, you know, he's he's really becoming a ninny this, series, this season. <laughs> and, I mean, it just... I roll my eyes when I you know think about it. I think that maybe we're going a little too far with this, but but yeah, he's he's being forced to confront uh, you know the the changes of the day. Women's rights is a huge um, you know a huge uh, part of the show, which uh, I think also resonates with a lot of us. So 
it's it's just a lot of fun, and uh, we can't wait to see what happens. It's a, it's amazing when you look at the numbers too, Beverly, isn't it? I mean, ten more than ten million viewers. That's not counting people who might have PVR'd it and are going to watch it later. Yeah. That's not counting the folks that obviously watched it in the UK itself. Uh, yeah. People elsewhere who you know buy it on DVD. I mean, you're talking about a, a real phenomenon. It is. It's, it's it's being watched in a hundred countries. That's you know that's quite an incredible uh, moment of of, of t- you know where we're all sort of watching the same thing. So that doesn't happen very much anymore. You're right with this sort of fragmented uh, universe of, of of television and yeah. People and- we also sort of see this. I think uh, personally anyway, but I think there's something going on here. The appeal of it anyway is this idea of kind of a yearning for. A simpler time, and now I say that the relationships are were you know just as complicated as as any of the modern age, but yet you know we do, you know we don't have people on Facebook and on smartphones, and people are not all distracted and and sort of caught up in in the sort of hubbub of daily life. There, things were a little bit the pace was slower, definitely slower. I yeah, mean, you couldn't communicate instantaneously. A telegram, I don't know how long it took to find out about the Titanic, but it wasn't you know instantaneous. And, and um, I think that there's something about that that we appreciate, too, the idea of getting dressed for dinner and all having dinner together. Even that in the, in, in the modern age is, is going by the wayside. Families really have to work, work at that. So, yeah, I think, um, I think we, yeah, we do hearken back to a, what we think of as a simpler time, although it, I'm sure it wasn't simple to live in service. No, no, no. Well, absolutely not. There's yeah. some great scenes uh, speaking to that, the idea of technology where – I'm not sure if it's in the second or third season, but where where the house gets its first telephone, uh, or 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 where they're dealing with sort of the, the car, the motor car, because uh, they're used to the horse and carriage, et cetera. And so there's that's really interesting too, as they kind of adjust to these these sort of early signs of technology creeping into their daily lives. Right. Well, late, late um, the Empress, the Dowager Empress Violet, um, Maggie Smith, who's one of you know the great fun characters um, of, of the show gets these wonderful lines, and one of them was, why does every day involve a fight with an American? And she's talking about, you know, dealing with a swivel chair, which she sits on for the first time and almost falls off. So, the, you know, there is, yes, a lot of, um, oh, electricity, that was a big uh, issue. Yes. She, she would, wouldn't have electricity in the house. So, yeah, I think it's reminding us, you know, it's a historical drama. It's really reminding us of and it's not that long ago even, uh, what life was like for so many people. So re- life has really changed. And maybe it, it, it reminds us that we should slow down, which is why people are all sort of waiting for Sunday evening and sort of watching it together. Because if there's something nice about, you know, getting together over the water cooler or even the virtual water cooler, which is what I think of Facebook as, um, to discuss it the next morning. You know, there's something... Um, old-fashioned about that, too. <laughs> you you mentioned Maggie Smith, and of course there are some phenomenal actors who are part of the show. The dialogue is just so crisp and, and so terribly British, and, and it really it really works. One of the other things you notice, uh, Beverly, is the idea that people haven't really changed all that much. I mean, a hundred years later, but, you know, humans are humans. Yes, yes, and um, there are always those who are grasping for more and power, and there are those of us <laughs> Who are the 99% and sort of wondering what the heck is going on and how do how do we get life to become more fair? But I do think that we look at it and and sort of see the history there and see that things are more fair. I mean, there is the eight-hour workday now for most people. There is, um, you know, women have rights. There are gay rights, um, and you know, people don't have to sort of cower in shame about being different the way uh, the the uh, the series implies. So, yeah, we've we've come a long way, but yes, we're still the same, and um, the production values are just so wonderful, and the characters are, are great, and, uh, but you know, that not, no show is perfect, and I love to criticize hmm. it, too. <laughs> hmm. It's part of the fun. My guest has been Beverly Ackerman, uh, a big fan of Downton Abbey, perhaps one of the biggest in the city of Montreal. Thanks so much, Beverly. Enjoy this fourth series. Thank you so much. You too, Todd.